Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to be taking a look at Tails right after this. So I try to uh, I try to accommodate people that are asking me to do a review of something, and this was in my message box for quite a while, and I've been wanting to take a look at Tails myself for some time. I do not use it currently, um, but I might after this. So we're going to be looking at the latest release. Uh, this is 4.4.1, and uh, and of course Tails is amnesic, meaning that it forgets everything that you've done. So that is its intent. And then incognito is really what it's meant to be for your identity when you're online so that you have some protection of your uh, identity while browsing the web or looking at anything on the Internet that is using the Tor network, for that matter. So it is uh, Tails is a it's a security focused distribution which is based on GNU Debian, and it's really <clears throat> aims to preserve privacy and I'm, I'm going to put this in quotes anonymity because there isn't any software that is going to be all inclusive to protect your anonymity uh, completely. I mean, there are always ways to gather traffic stats. To I mean, if you're up against some global adversary. <laughs> You're going to, yes, it's going to be very difficult <clears throat> to protect your anonymity for long. But it does provide some level of protection uh, for your, for your uh, browsing habits and for uh, what are you, what are you uh, looking up and what are you searching for. These are all things that are concerns today to a lot of different people, including just average citizens. Uh, so it uses the Tor network for all incoming and outgoing transmissions. So uh, you you have that ability, not only just the Tor browser, but you also have, we'll talk about some of the other software in a bit, but you also have those other components that you need to wrap uh, end to end your security, uh, um, your security transmissions. So it does block all non-anonymous connections. Um, that is one of the features of it. So if you try to go to a website that is that is does not provide an in, in encryption, for example, uh, it may fail. <laughs> it may fail. Uh, it does not install uh, per se. There is an installation procedure, but it's really meant to be used as a live CD or a live U, uh, USB stick. Um, you can install this under a VPN if you wish as well. Um, and some of the pro financial support for Tails comes from the Tor project. So they do provide some financial assistance to the Tails people. Now, uh, I'm not saying that that is all the money they ever needed. No, I mean, they, I mean it, if you like this distribution, like all distributions, and you want to contribute to it, please feel free to do so because that is supporting the developers in creating a better product for us. So it comes with a few applications. Uh, it comes with a web browser, which of course is the Tor browser. It comes with an instant messenger client, client which is Pigeon Instant Manage Messenger. And we'll talk a little bit about there are some features that are enabled in Pigeon to allow it to be more secure. There is a, uh, of course, there's Thunderbird for the email client, and again, there are special features which are enabled in that to make it more secure as well. Uh, Office Suite is LibreOffice. There are a number of images and sound uh, editors available to it, and then, of course, in there, you know, is, there is uh, support for GIMP as well. Hardware requirements takes two gigabytes of memory. It will work in less, uh, allegedly, but you may have some stability issues. Uh, unexplained crashes, just weird behavior may occur with less than 2 gig. They do recommend that that is the minimum. 64-bit uh, CPU, Intel AMD, there's no support for PowerPC or ARM currently with Tails <clears throat> that I'm aware of. Uh, it, it does require 8 gigabytes uh, storage, uh, so an 8 gigabyte USB stick or, you know, a, a, and you also, if you're going to use DVDs, and in and, and this day and age, I don't know how many people still have those, but 
it does require those to be in a recordable format and a recordable drive because you are writing, obviously you're writing some state out as you're running. Um, Tales, some warnings, some things that Tales did. Now, this is a pretty long list, and it, and it may alarm you, but this is probably true of almost any security uh, uh, software that you would install in any environment. So this is not unique, certainly, to, to uh, Tails. Uh, it, it, Tails doesn't protect against, of course, compromised hardware. If your hardware is compromised, Tails will be compromised. Uh, if your host network is compromised, then yes, Tails is also compromised because it can't do anything about that. Uh, it doesn't protect from BIOS and firmware attacks. Those are outside of the execution space of, of uh, Tails. Uh, man in the middle attacks, what are we talking about there? I mean, that is generally between the exit node on Tor and whatever destination you're going to. It doesn't protect you from any man in the middle attacks there. Uh, the only way you can actually... Uh, mitigate that risk would be to encrypt uh, and, and to end from your workstation to your destination node. So that is one way to kind of help uh, with man-in-the-middle attacks. Uh, confirmation attacks, those are gathering stats on uh, the, actually it's timing between when you put a request out on the network and when it exits the Tor network. That, that has been a known way to identify uh, a potentially identify you uh, in the in the network uh, because they see a they see a submission here and they see an exit submission there and based on the timing they can correlate how well how close those might be so yeah it doesn't protect against that uh, tails does not encrypt your data by default uh, that's something you have to set up uh, but just remember that in tails it also doesn't remember anything that you keep either unless you set up a storage area for that and there are some precautions uh, if you're going to do that that you should follow that's beyond really this tutorial today you should there is advice on their website on how to do that on the tails website also, Tails does not, of course, clear any metadata from your documents, but they do provide some tools which will allow you to uh, get rid of that metadata within the documents to, to provide a more anonymized version of those, if you will. Uh, Tails does not encrypt email headers. Of course, the email headers are not encrypted going over the network. That includes the subject, the, uh, the uh, title line, and the recipient, any additional information that you are pushing into your mail header. Uh, that is not encrypted. So, and Tails doesn't do anything about that because the protocols that run in the internet don't support encrypted headers. So, it won't provide protect you from a global adversary. I mean, if you got somebody with a lot of money and they're monitoring all every single node uh, in the internet, yeah, you can't. You, this Tor is not going to protect you. And neither is Tails. Uh, it does not se separate your contextual identities. And the what I mean by that is if you're logging on uh, in the same session that you're running, like uh, if I'm running Tails and I have two identical, if I have two identical sessions up, but one is using a different ID than the other one, Tails isn't going to protect you in that instance. Your identities can be linked. Uh, it, by the uh, by the destination site, so just be aware of that. Now, Tails does recommend if you're going to switch contextual identities, that uh, you reboot uh, the system uh, and before you switch your IDs, so because Tails will then erase any tracking history and any any kind of uh, information that was captured during the last session. Uh, let's see. Some features. Uh, the desktop environment is GNOME, and it's uh, 3.30.2, so it's a fairly old, older release of GNOME, but not, not ancient. Uh, the networking is, uh, of course, the Tor Onion circuit. Uh, Tor browser. Pigeon is configured with off-the-record messaging uh, as a, or the OTR plugin. Uh, Onion Share is for anonymous file sharing, so uh, if you're creating documents in, in uh, Tails and you want to store them off someplace, you can use the Onion Share to move them from one location to another. Uh, Thunderbird uses uh, uh, Enigmail, uh, which allows uh, open PGP support. Of course, that would be to encrypt and decrypt the contents of the mail message. Uh, air cracking allows you to, if you are using this, say, in a mobile environment where you are using wireless, air cracking allows you to monitor what's going on with your wireless connection to look for anything suspicious. Uh, 
Uh, it uses Electrum, which is the uh, Bitcoin uh, client, and uh, it's a pretty user-friendly one as far as I know. I don't use Bitcoin, but uh, I have looked at that before in the past, and uh, it is it does seem to be pretty user-friendly. Uh, <clears throat> some other features. Uh, the, there are a number of ways to support encryption and privacy with, with uh, Tails. It, of course, uses Lux, which is the standard method for encryption of, uh, of uh, Linux disks uh, in, in a, uh, the entire uh, disk, that is, or volume. You, it also supports VeraCrypt, uh, and that, of course, allows you to either encrypt files or to create volumes within uh, the disk storage of, your, say, your USB stick, and then in, in turn uh, add another layer of encryption to that data. Uh, it does use uh, GNU PG, which is the uh, open implementation of Open uh, PGP. Uh, MAT NAT allows you to anonymize metadata in files, so you can run MAT and uh, and and you configure it and then run it. Uh, KeyPass XE is the password manager. I, I I mean I will go back and talk a little bit about MAT. I don't use MAT personally. Uh, I just uh, I just haven't, but I might consider looking at it um, in the future and maybe doing uh, some videos on MAT. Uh, KeyPass XE, of course, is the password manager under Tails. Uh, JTK Hash allows you to calculate ch uh, checksum. So if you're downloading data and you know the uh, checksum and you want to uh, make sure that the data has not been modified, you can check that. Uh, Tesseract, uh, excuse me, PDP uh, Redact tools, those strip the metadata from documents before publishing. So that would be like if I had, uh, and of course, any kind of PDF document or, or any kind of uh, Word document is going to have some kind of metadata in it. And so that will strip it uh, out of there. Uh, Tesseract OCR uh, converts images with text. So, in other words, if I want to translate a scanned image of a document to a text document, I can use Tesseract OCR to do that. Optical character recognition is what OCR stands for. Uh, FFmpeg is uh, recording convert audio and video files. Um, I, there's a full list of packages that are on the Tails website. I'm not going to cover every one of them. I just highlighted a few of them that I found kind of interesting and also were highlighted on their website as well. So I didn't use all of them and, and, uh, and, and didn't include all of them either. Uh, so some additional features of uh, this release of Tails is that you can now upgrade your USB stick. And I don't know if that was something that they included in the past, but it's something they called out in this release. Uh, and, of course, you can run Tails inside of a VM, although it's really its purpose is to be on a, on, a, on a removable media. You put it into your computer, you boot up off of it, you're done, you shut down, everything gets blown away. Uh, that was done during that session, including any settings or any configuration that you do. Uh, and I do remember uh, I have not personally done, like I said, I don't personally use Tails, but maybe we'll play around with it for the next couple of weeks and maybe explore further and do an updated video on this. And still just consider this an introduction uh, uh, of Tails. I know what Tails does. I understand what it does, but uh, I don't personally have not personally used it for anything. Uh, Tails erases most memory on shutdown, and of course, most memory being that it does not clear things like video memory. So, uh, yeah, if you have a, a graphics card or you're using an internal graphics card uh, built into your, uh, uh, your CPU, of course, then, yeah, that memory may or may not be uh, purged. Uh, so just be aware of that. So, but it does remove anything out of main memory, uh, and uh, when the and, and that occurs if you remove the boot media or if you phys physically shut down the machine. So, either way, it'll it'll purge it. So, why would you use it? I mean, all those things that we just scared you with about some of the things that Tails can't protect you from. Why would you use this? Well. The, I mean, the alternative is VPN, right? Uh, the virtual private network. So if uh, VPNs are something that you're using, l let me tell you straight up that VPNs are not protecting your anonymity. Uh, and an enemy, uh, for the main reason is that as you, as you hit the VPN site, there could be a monitor there at the input node. And then another monitor on the outbound <laughs> network port of that, of that VPN server to, to look and correlate 
what came in and what went out. And of course, you're going to be decrypted going out of the uh, VPN, so your identity is right there, and they can link it right back to you. So VPNs do not protect uh, do not protect you from identity theft or identity. I should say. Uh, fingerprinting you uh, through your uh, movements through the internet. So, uh, yeah, attacker could certainly do that. Uh, the other reason for uh, using Tails over a VPN is simply that uh, you have a lot, it would be a lot more difficult to uh, monitor a, tail, a Tor connection uh, because the, there's up to, uh, something over 6,000 nodes here today. And Tails is pretty widely used. There are 2 million users worldwide that use t Tails on a daily basis. So, yeah, sorting through all that, good luck. I mean, that would, be, that would take a lot of time and a lot of effort. Someone would really have to be coming after you in order to get it. And, yes, if they really want you, they will get you. Um, uh, so, I mean, uh, I'm not a proponent for doing things that are illegal on the Internet, and I certainly don't support that activity. Uh, but I do feel that there are a, a number of things which I consider to be invasive uh, for my privacy. And uh, quite frankly, uh, it's none of their damn business what I do. Uh, the user base has, like I said, two million. Uh, who else would be using this? Well, uh, uh, journalists, lawyers, law enforcement, governments, human rights activists, business leaders, you know, a whole bunch of them. But, you know, average citizens certainly can use uh, this this uh, system in order to protect their identity. And in particular, if you're going to public places with public free wireless Internet, uh, those, those typically are uh, passwordless and uh, leave your information unencrypted and make you vulnerable to man-in-the-middle attacks from someone that is impersonating the wireless router that happens to be sitting at a table in the same uh, facility as you. Uh, so they could uh, hijack all the uh, content and watch everything you do. Uh, where, and this would allow you to encrypt everything end-to-end -end, uh, before um, allowing things to go out over your wireless network. Uh, it is Tor is a separate project from Tails, uh, but they do provide some financial support, as I had mentioned before. So I guess probably, as always, the thing to do here is uh, switch screens and take a look at it. Let me uh, get my mouse back here. Okay. Now, I've already got it up and running. It, it takes a bit to uh, boot. It takes it because it is booting off of the USB stick. I am running this off of an Intel NUC 10 um, a machine. And let me see. Um, I need to get a full screen here. So as you can see, this is GNOME. <laughs> uh, and you have a number of things here on the desktop. I, I believe. Oh, so the first thing I should tell you is that if you have any, any uh, um, let's say if you're on a wireless network and you have configuration for a password and all that, uh, as far as I know, you have to re-enter that every single time you reboot into the system because it does not remember. And remember, it, it is amnesic, so it doesn't remember any settings that you put in. If you set you know, your background colors, if you start to set up any uh, themes or anything like that, all that's going to be forgotten every time you do it. Now, I know there are some ways that you could preserve that, but again, not going to go into that today. Uh, so, yeah, there, there's... Um, so let's do a couple things here. So let's open... I've already established my network connection. I am connected, as you can see. And I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and open the Tor circuit here. And that'll show me the status of my circuit. So it's currently up and running. They're built and they're running. I can click on each one of those and look at it. I'm not going to do that. I mean, but, uh, uh, but you can do that on your own. So you can see what's going on with this. Uh, and then you can, let's go ahead and bring up the Tor browser. So we are encrypting the network connection first, and now we're connecting the HTTP connection that's going between the browser and the uh, web server. So I can do a Tor check. 
the default page goes to Tails, and then it says, congratulations, your browser is configured. Now, one of the things that I would do is, and I'll talk about this somewhat later, is it, okay, so it shows my IP address. Now, that is not my IP address. So that is one of the, that is the uh, node, exit node for Tor. That's not me. Um, but yeah, that's the whole purpose of this is to do some anonymizing. Uh, as far as search is concerned, let's just try, um, let's do a search on Tor. And I, I believe this is DuckDuckGo. Yeah, it's DuckDuckGo. You can change this if you prefer Start Page or one of the other uh, anonymous uh, search engines. You can certainly do that. Um, also, you, you might want to review the um, Tor information as well uh, because they do have suggestions. So things like that could be used to get your identity if you change your uh, size of your browser. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And there's my my utilities that for favorites, and then again, same thing here. Any, any now this would come up normally, uh, dark text on white. Any changes you make here again are not saved. If you'd say put any files here, they're not saved. So just be aware of that. That uh, this is not a work environment. This is a place to perform work, but not to store work if you understand the difference. So it means you would have to have some access to a, a tour share or something like that in order to store off your work. Um, there's the onion share utility. I'll just bring up a few things. And then you would add in wherever the endpoint is for your, uh, for your storage server. And let's see. Let's do my usual thing here. So it is a 5.4 kernel. And then uh, this, again, is based on Buster. Or is it Buster? Probably is a later version, because Buster isn't even that new. But it is Debian. It's probably a Debian test. I think it's probably a Debian test release. We can go find out if there's anything here. Yep, let's go look. I don't know, so I'm going to look. It's theirs. It's Buster. Yep, it's Buster. Okay. It's the main. So it's not one of the testing releases, but it is going through their side of it. So, yeah, I mean, they could change the kernel if they want to. Um, nothing to stop them from that. So let's see, OS release. I'm going to guess this is probably going to be their information. Yeah. And this distribution at the moment is listed as unstable. Now, according to their website, they say that this is stable. So maybe this is just something they need to update. It just haven't been done yet. So, yeah. Um, and, of course, they are currently working on 4.5 right now. As far as the... What are some of the other utilities? I said we were going to look at Matt. Let's see if we can find Matt. I wanna, I'm kind of curious as to what that does. And also, I don't... It could be that that's an add-on. Let's see. Key pass, go fish, files. Nope. It does come with uh, GIMP and also Inkscape which is nice, simple scan. Internet has onion circuits, onion store, store share, uh, excuse me, pigeon, Thunderbird, Tor, yeah, what we talked about, an unsafe browser. I suppose that would, the unsafe would be used to connect unencrypted and not over the Tor network. In case you're having a problem, there are sites that do ban uh, Tor connections and um, your identity is shown as being Tails and Tor. So, uh, yeah, they would know, they will know that you are using Tor. 
as well as probably tails, if they're looking for it. I don't see... So I'll have to do a little bit of reading on this, and I'll put an update. Now, there's Veracrypt, the unlock. So I assume there has to be a Veracrypt out here as well. Nope. Okay. Let's see, no mat. So there's probably some things that I need to read up on, and then I will do a follow-up video on some of those other aspects of the system. I, I am very curious on, on how some of this works, uh, because I personally would like to use some of this stuff, too. Uh, as far as... As far as... There's some programming tools. Let's take a look and... I doubt any of this stuff is real recent. This was released at the end of March, 29th of March, I think this release came out. So, but because it's Debian, you know, the packages are going to lag behind a bit. Yeah, 6152. So, yeah, so they are, there is a package, it is package based on Debian, which, you know, you would expect because you want. And especially in security releases, you want something that's been tested a little bit more for vulnerabilities, and uh, they do that. Um, yeah, so I need to do a second video on this. I want to go and explore a little bit about these utilities. I was hoping that I'd be able to get to them. I don't, yeah, of course, that's the places stuff. And I, I just don't see it, so yeah, okay. I will do a secondary video on this. I want to cover some more of this later, but let me let me just give you what my initial thoughts are for right now, and uh, and then we'll close out this video today and look for a video too, probably within the next week or two. I'm not gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna spend some time with this and uh, and get those other utilities up and running. I want to uh, I want to encrypt the the uh, USB stick. I want to get an area on. I know you can install Tails, but it, you know if you do that, it obliterates the stick. Um, but the other thing is I want to see if I can create some file systems which are mutable so that I can write to them. And, and maybe if I have to, then create some shares that I can use with the uh, Tor share. Uh, so uh, as long as you realize that there's no single tool that's going to protect your, uh, guarantee your anonymity, uh, then Tails is a good solution. And that's true of any of these um, types of tools, whether it be cubes or whether it be uh, oh, I don't know, some of, uh, you know, maybe uh, some of the other tools that are available out there as well. So there are a number of distributions. I'll probably, maybe I'll cover those and then try to come back and do a feature comparison between them. I've done, you know, only one other, well, two others besides this one. So this is now my third. There's one more to go. So suggestion. Um, I would start with the Tor do's and don'ts. There is a pretty good site for what you should do and what you should not do inside of a Tor browser. Um, if you really want to, it, because there are, there's easy ways that you can expose your identity, and that has been done before. Uh, the other thing, review the Tails documentation, make sure you understand uh, there is a getting started, there's how to use Tails, and there's some information about that you probably want to go review. That would take a lot longer video for me to cover all that with you today. I might recap some of that in the second video, though. If you're using Tails Mobile, encrypt everything end-to-end -end and make sure that you are connecting to uh, HTTPS uh, on the endpoints end uh, because anywhere where you're unencrypted, a man in middle can take over your connection. So just be aware of that, especially if you're in a wireless environment. And check uh, your wireless uh, your 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 uh, your wireless uh, monitor to make sure that there isn't something kind of funny going on. It can, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, I'll probably cover that in the second video too. Uh, also, encrypt your USB key if you can, uh, because if you lose the key, uh, it, potentially it could ex it could be something on there. I doubt it, but. You know, it's it's always it's especially if you have areas that are mutable, you do want to encrypt those. 
Uh, yeah, no, no security software that I'm aware of is complete. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's just uh, so you'll want to keep your tails up to date. And they have provided some mechanisms for you to do that, which I consider very good. My overall thoughts on tails, it's 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 an, it has enough that has piqued my curiosity. And, um, yeah, I, I, w- I would like to go explore this a little further. I like the fact that it is, I can take it with me, you know, wherever I go, I can just plug it into a machine and go. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I really like that feature. And, and I like some of the other features about being able to remove metadata, but I don't have enough experience with it yet to be able to explain that to you just yet. And so I'll come back in the second video when I've been able to, to, uh, educate myself. Again, as always, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video today. And, uh, and and if there's something that you know about Tails that you'd like me to cover as they are explain, or maybe you have some explanations that you'd like to share, I would love to hear from you as well. Mm-hmm.